Yo, what's going on everybody? It's your boy, Potential Unleashed. We are back with another One Piece video. This is One Piece chapter 1060. It is titled Luffy's Dream. Let's talk about it. It's pretty interesting because we start out with the Straw Hats discussing what's going on with Sabo. We know recently it came out that Sabo is now considered the Flame Emperor and he is the one that killed Cobra. Where Luffy's like, yo, Sabo would never do this. This has to be a misunderstanding. And Robin agrees because number one, Luffy knows his brother and uh, Sabo's intentions and also rivals with him for two years she also knows what Sabo is capable of doing and how his personality is where originally I thought that Cobra I don't really know if he's dead or not they say he's dead and later in the chapter the way that Sabo describes it um it's like Cobra's dead but there's no body and you know if there's no body confirmed then it's kind of hard to say if they're actually truly dead but for right now we're going to say that they're dead and Luffy is like yo we got to set course for Alabasta we got to check on Vivi got to see what's going on with Sabo as well where Zoro's like well what good is that going to do right this man's already dead number one and number two well Vivi is last seen at Mary Jawa where Luffy's like all right then screw Alabasta let's go to Mary Jawa and then there's also Caribou he's in a barrel he's listening to all this information i think this is important um a little bit later in the chapter for what happens towards the end and then afterwards zoro you know he's the vice captain he has to be the level-headed one because even though zoro does stuff on impulse he definitely does not do it on the level of luffy where zoro's like yo you want to barge in the navy hq and declare war and luffy's like yeah are you chicken where this is kind of funny because i don't know why zoro asks this knowing that two years ago luffy ran into <laughs> navy hq just to rescue ace but granted whitebeard was there as well this would be kind of different it would just be the straw hats going maybe the straw hat grand fleet and maybe allies will come in as well eventually but they don't have time to prepare if they would do it on impulse and zoro's like well no i'm not chicken and i'm scared but we don't have any leans we got to make sure that we're doing stuff and keeping a level head and stop acting rash uh rashly and you know without uh what's what i'm looking for without basically he's saying we gotta look before we leap right and i agree right i understand that luffy's upset because there's stuff going on with vivi there's stuff going on with sabo but you have to calm down right sanji's losing it right his <laughs> vivi San, vivi chan she's you know going through it he doesn't know first off she's missing number two um her father's dead so she's got a lot going on right now and there's other characters that are a little bit upset like chopper and nami because they were there as well and usopp um they were there for alabasta like uh, chopper he's like yo what's going on with vivi's dad he was so nice it kind of sucks that he's dead where usopp agrees and nami she's kind of trying to figure out what's going on with the two of them um what's going on with vivi what's going on how is she feeling there's also jimbei brooke and frank they weigh in a little bit not necessarily about um vivi and cobra specifically but they're just talking about sabo talking about uh the reverie talking about alabasta estate because that's all they could really weigh on since they never really interacted with vivi or cobra where they finally decide they're like yo all right we're going to go after vivi where zoro he's like knock it off right he's like luffy remember what you said about um ace the last time during thriller bark he was like ace has his own adventures and zoro's like you trusted him making his own decisions up until the point where he needed help when luffy went to marine for he says so you have to trust in sabo you have to trust in vivi and vivi's strong she'll be okay right he says so we gotta relax think with a level head and we're not going there unless it's a dire situation where she 100 needs our help and then um chopper sanji nami and luffy they all start making fun of zoro calling him names you know talking you're a green kata you're a green big mom crappy masa this is really important because um it, it's a callback to what happened last time they were in alabasta remember when zoro was talking about should have uh if you wanted vivi on the crew you should have brought her by force right they all made fun of him it's just a callback to that time it's very hilarious um that we get this interaction once again nico robin as she always reads the newspaper she's talking about there's other developments besides the sabo thing talking about cross guilds and how the warlord system was abolished where she's like yo buggy became an emperor luffy's like hold up there's got to be some misunderstanding which we actually found out it was and robin she's like yo there's other big names out there that have a lot to do with stuff probably talking about blackbeard kobe uh and what's her name boa hancock and probably some other stuff that is still 
um, that we don't know yet, probably about Weevil, um, maybe about Shanks and the other Yonko or other crews, right? And she's like, yo, Luffy, you want me to tell you? And he's like, nah, I don't really care, right? As long, you know, tell me what I need to know, right? That's your job. And Rama's like, yeah, I know. I don't want to overwhelm you with information. We then go and cut to Luffy talking about Sabo um, and his dream, talking about how Sabo had a rough upbringing where they all decided to say their dream. And Luffy's like, here's my dream. And we still don't know what it is, right? There was a lot of flashbacks that we had of Luffy saying his dream where a lot of people have shot faces they laugh different reactions going to it and at first well we thought it was him wanting to become the pirate king but there was also I think episode 1015 where they remastered it the parallels of Odin Roger and Whitebeard and then Ace Sabo and Luffy talking about Luffy said a dream and Yamato was taken aback by it right we still don't know his dream and a lot of people have speculated that he had a second one which is confirmed he does where the crew this is the first and they're here and everybody's freaking out they're like yo are you serious and Luffy believes that in order to achieve his dream that he has to become the king of the pirates now off the top of my Head. it probably has to do with something uh he needs everybody to either respect him or know who his name is have a lot of influence in the world so it might be getting rid of the grand line it might be trying to unite people try maybe i don't know something along those lines at least from the uh what i have from initially reading this chapter what i can speculate his dream could possibly be we also find out that uh besides the crew just now only a Sabo and shanks were the only ones to hear this where shanks ended up crying um because it's probably um similar to him hearing what rod said and then ace and saba obviously they laugh because they're a brother but remember ace was all like yo we can laugh at it right but you can't or he told you so you can't laugh at it because they truly believe that all jokes aside that luffy would be able to accomplish this dream this is the part of the chapter that goes crazy because we get saba we get the revolutionaries we get the marine apparently this is saba on the phone a lot of people thought it was katarina devon trying to be saba right that was speculation but saba's calling right he's gotta make it quick because something's about to go down and we also get the five elders they're talking about you know Sabo he's making a move right and he's like oh it's fate that this is about to happen because this is the town or this country I don't know if Emu's there but Emu has some connection to it or some like within the range and I said within the range because what they did towards the end of the chapter apparently Sabo, he's basically like a marriage of wild. We thought that there wasn't a king or somebody, a ruler of the world, but it's wrong that there's somebody there. And that person he's talking about is Emu. And as he's trying to talk to Dragon, you know, talking about how he wasn't the one to kill Cobra, and he's trying to t say what happens. Emu basically crosses out um, the country off the map, right? And then afterwards, uh, they basically nuke the country, right? It's called Lulucia. Um, if you guys don't know, that's actually the cover, the country from the cover story that Ace is at. So Sabo is talking, right? The whole place is nuked. This reminds me of El Thor for some reason with Enel. Um, Emu uses their eye or their sharing gun we're gonna call it that for right now and then sabo's on that country and it, it's like the country never existed that's how big of the explosion it was and the communication with sabo's cut off so is he dead probably not um he's a logia so you know that wasn't made with hockey or anything that we know of um but i will say this we don't know we know where poseidon is and we know where uranus is this could be um, the uh, an ancient weapon potentially they made Pluton. We don't know. Actually, no, we don't know where Uranus is. I lied. Uh, we do know where Poseidon is. That is Shirahoshi. We know where Pluton is. It is in Wano. And so this could be the ancient weapon of Uranus that Emu has in their possession. Lastly, we cut to the Straw Hats there on. Uh, their ship they are cruising and all of a sudden it's like all hell broke loose right it's really cold there's a bunch of um turbulence going on i said turbulence but they're on the sea turbulence has something to do with the you know being in a plane but apparently there is a warm eddy going in the sky and the reason why this is important is because an eddy i believe is a whirlpool and typically whirlpools go downwards into the ocean so it's kind of weird that it's going upwards and apparently there's somebody in there and it's a woman and so zor he ends up cutting the water with bird dance and chopper he ends up flying away because you know chopper's so light and there's strong winds going on louis tries to grab him he ends up getting sent flying and then apparently jewelry bonnie is in this warm eddy after his cut she is in her child form where we know that she was at Mary Jo Wa. she knows everything that happened um and so she's probably going to clear up what happened give some clarification what happened with Sabo with Kuma um with the celestial dragons with the admirals etc and I mentioned that Caribou was here as well so he'll probably hear this Caribou's going to be important because he'll probably end up leaking all this information maybe to Morgans maybe to somebody I don't know but besides 
Jewelry Boney and a Rouge. And I guess you could say Blackbeard, but we have had some interactions with him. Um, and we have had him in the story a lot. And eventually we'll interact with him some more because we're going to have to fight him for the King of the Pirates. I believe her and Arouge are the last two of the worst generation that we really have to interact with. For some reason, the worst generation, it's giving me Hashira vibes from Demon Slayer, how each arc is centered around or, center around, or has some importance to do with the, um, the Hashira. And I feel like in One Piece, since they've been introduced, especially coming out the post time skip you know there was law then there was a uh, kid there's also a Pooh. there's hawkins there's x drake there's blackbeard and then there was Beji and whole cake island and now we're getting with bony and eventually we'll get with a i just find that kind of cool overall an interesting chapter there's no break next week emu i don't know how they ended up nuking a whole country wiping it off the face of the earth right there's also the whole zoro being a vice captain moment i kind of find it funny how he talked about you know we'll go save ace i mean we'll go save sabo or vivi um you know when push comes to shove but you know kind of you know kind of wait a little bit and ace ended up dying so that was a little bit insensitive but you know he kind of was making a rational decision just i love the interaction with the straw hats overall really solid the chapter let me know how you guys feel about this chapter in the comment section below thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe also the notification so you guys never saw a new video from me it's going to your snapchat and tiktok is on the screen in the description below thank you guys so much for watching and don't forget to unleash your potential